We have learned that our current economic modes do not work. And the way we've lived over the past two centuries is not something that will uh, be sustainable for us as we move into the future. We have also learned that we need transformative change, especially in the way that we interface with nature. This change must be fundamental in terms of that we need to introspect on our core values uh, that underlie both our political and economic decision-making processes. Since we've only been trying this model of life for the past two centuries, we are seeking help from those who might have found success in applying their way of life for much longer than that. And that's where indigenous communities come in. Current people, we believe we have uh, 37 souls in one, one life. Five souls come on our body. And the 32 souls, they are stay in the nature. That's why we really need to take care of our souls. We integrate the nations. People found that uh, if they do the beekeeping, in the whole, whole heart of fellows, so very good. And the bees are very uh, like very much that continue every year. This also create a lot of the, what we call the uh, pollination to the biodiversity of the fellow area. Not just fellow area, forest area. All the ecosystem become become a recovery, very very rich for that process. Human beings are equal to nature and animal. So when we go hunting and we or pick up the plants, edible plants. Uh, we are told not to take everything. We are always uh, have to leave something behind for the animals and plants and trees to come back to life again. So this is uh, philosophy behind is not to disturb the circle of nature. The words that we have most used so far in our discussions there will be community, there will be relation with nature, respect, uh, acknowledging our dependence from nature and nurturing the nature and looking after each other and looking after the environment. And my background is actually in education and my area of teaching and research is mostly around indigenizing our early childhood curriculum using uh, Te Ao Māori values, um, such as those, in particular I've looked at um, values around sustainability perspectives from Māori and bringing those to a wider educational perspective. Uh, our well-being is intricate, intricately invested in the well-being of our immediate and wider environs. We're talking again, as has it already been pointed out, we're talking about the well-being of us as a collective, but it's not just the humans who are part of this collective. It's our more than human, uh, it's a term that's been used, or our uh, other than human cohabitants of the earth. We live together with them and we must also respect and care for them. That is part of being a good kaitia. You do not have to be brought up with these values to appreciate and respect them and that these values can be utilised by people from all walks of life. Resilience is, is not just an end point. It's, it's a process of learning and unlearning and it's um, it's changing mindsets and ways of working. What was most important was how do you extract the essence of these values without hurting their, um, uh, you know, sort of core objective, uh, but be able to use them, apply them and embed them into other societies. This is a very good event that has enabled us to look at the nexus between environmental objectives, developmental objectives, um, how we intend to sustain humanity into the future and looking at the past, at the conventional wisdom of indigenous peoples and how they've managed to sustain their lives throughout uh, centuries and millennia in a way that has rendered them um, custodians of 80% of the world's biodiversity today. So this is basically what we're trying to do and it's a first step um, 
towards what I believe will be a very important discourse that has to evolve in the future.